Ah. Hold him steady, oh, brother. No. May the hand of God guide me. There's bad medicine, and then there's straight up insanity. I believe sucking smoke into your lungs will kill you. My physicians say it relaxes the, the throat. Well, they're idiots. They've all been knighted. Makes it official then. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 strangest medical practices in history. No, don't stop. I think you're enjoying yourself too much. For this list, we're looking at some of the most baffling procedures throughout the ages that have been approved by medical experts of the time. Here we go. <laughs> Considering some of the practices we came across in our research, we're glad to be living in this century. Due to the subject matter, please be advised that this list may contain disturbing content. Damn you to hell. <laughs> Number 10. Female Hysteria Cures In the Victorian era, women who experienced anxiety, sleeplessness, irritability, and who were plagued with erotic fantasies were diagnosed with hysteria. She's still feeling anxious? It's quite anxious, Doctor. I've been having those distracting thoughts we discussed all week. These symptoms actually stemmed from sexual frustration, but at the time, it was believed that women did not have sex drives. Female hysteria and its symptoms, as a result of the belief in the wandering womb, whereby a woman's uterus relocated to different parts of her body, had been recognized as early as ancient Greece. I like to begin with a drop of musk oil. However, it was during the 19th century that doctors and midwives devised a treatment of massaging women's genitals with various liquids, like vegetable oil, until they orgasmed. This treatment was popular, and patients frequently returned which led physicians to experience chronic hand fatigue. Hey! Your hand is so cold, doctor. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mrs. Castellari, I forgot. So eventually, a device was made to simplify the process. And today, we know it as the vibrator. How do you feel, Molly? <sighs> Bloody marvelous, how do you think? Number nine, Mrs. Winslow's soothing syrup. Dr. Thackeray's rejuvenation liniment. Rub it on your trouble spots thrice daily, your malady will disappear. <laughs> Patent medicines were all the rage in the 19th and 20th centuries, and this brand is a sample of the miracle cures that were widely promoted. Marketed by druggists Jeremiah Curtis and Benjamin A. Perkins, the name was attributed to Curtis's mother-in-law, Charlotte N. Winslow, who created the formula while nursing infants. Advertised as a medicinal product formula to soothe children's ailments, including teething, the syrup's two main ingredients were morphine and aqua ammonia, the latter of which is used in household cleaning agents. Although successful in relieving pain and diarrhea, accidental overdose of the product was not uncommon, and it was hence given the nickname Baby Killer. Despite being denounced by the American Medical Association in 1911, Mrs. Winslow's continued to be sold in the UK until 1930. Number 8. Lobotomies And this unlucky patient's Dementia will no longer take a violent form. The advent of this barbaric procedure isn't that far off from the present. The first lobotomy, also known as leucotomy, was performed in 1935 and became widely used as an alternative treatment for patients with serious mental illness, such as schizophrenia and depression. She's been given what's called a transorbital lobotomy. It used to be known as an ice pick lobotomy. The procedure evolved from drilling into the skull to the ever-popular ice pick, which was hammered above the eyeball and into the frontal lobes of the brain. The process was meant to eliminate superfluous emotion while evening out the personality. While it did render patients complacent, others experienced no change, and many worsened, with their intellects, self-control, and other forms of mental activity becoming limited. Number 7. Moldy Bread as Disinfectant Today, if you have moldy bread in your pantry, you'd get rid of it. But back in the day, the use of moldy bread to disinfect cuts has been traced as far back as ancient Egypt, and it was also used in ancient Serbia, China, and Greece. Though they didn't know it at the time, the reason this worked was that certain fungi are known to prevent the growth of disease-causing bacteria. This was later discovered by French chemist and microbiologist Louis Pasteur. Who would have thought that moldy bread can act like penicillin, 
Seriously though, don't use it on yourself. There's rubbing alcohol for that. I know it seems like a waste of good whiskey. Indulge me. <laughs> Number six, heroin as a remedy for coughs, colds, and pain. Take the best orgasm you ever had. Multiply it by a thousand and you're still nowhere near it. Similar to other home remedies like Mrs. Winslow's, heroin was a common ingredient found in many 19th century miracle serums. In the 1890s, the company Bayer commercialized both their aspirin and heroin medicine bottles as remedies for children suffering from coughs, colds, and aches. Due to extensive use of Bayer's heroin brand, patients started to develop a tolerance for the product, despite the fact that it was advertised as a non-addictive substitute to morphine. He's experiencing withdrawal symptoms. And if he can get his narcotic... He lives from fix to fix. And if he is lucky, he dies early. This resulted in a growing number of addicts in the U.S. who kept trying to get their hands on it and its status as a drug that's only legally available by prescription. Number 5. Metal hooks and rectal surgery for bladder stones. It may occur when urine in the bladder becomes concentrated and materials crystallize. Passing stones has never been a pleasant experience. If you've ever experienced such pain, be very happy that surgeries through the butthole are a thing of the past. While bladder stones were sometimes removed by inserting a metal hook through the urethra, there also existed another method in the Middle Ages. Two assistants held down a patient in a jackknife position while the doctor pushed the stone through the bladder's entrance and removed it by cutting through the anus. We should probably start calling this period the Brutal Ages. Number 4. Electric Shock Therapy to Cure Impotence A shock to the system. Well, for one particular system, anyway. Although the discovery of electricity heralded quite a few ingenious technologies, the electric belt was definitely not one of them. Here we go. <laughs> One product, called the electric belt and suspensory for men, was promoted in the early 20th century to cure erectile dysfunction, among other ailments. Believe it or not, I came here voluntarily. This contraption consisted of a belt with a coil of wire designed for the crown jewels, which sent a jolt to the groin. If men back then were willing to shock their junk, they must have been pretty desperate. Hey, get a little tired of this. You volunteered, didn't you? Number three, treating hemorrhoids with hot irons. <laughs> this procedure brings a whole new meaning to fire in the hole. In the Middle Ages, the best way to prevent hemorrhoids was by praying to Saint Fiac, the patron saint of hemorrhoid sufferers. Hemorrhoid. When should I come back? When should I come back? Come back when you learn some manners! If you were unlucky, then you had to visit the medieval physicians who would insert a hot iron into your anus. <laughs> the less painful and least effective method was to sit on Saint Fiacre's stone, where the 7th century Irish monk is said to have been miraculously cured of the ailment. It's a hemorrhoid. <clears throat> Thank you. Now erase that from your memory. Number two, bloodletting. One of the most iconic historical medical practices that comes to mind, bloodletting was practiced for over 2,000 years, notably in ancient Greece, Egypt, and Europe in the 1800s. Bloodletting is the act of cutting open a vein and draining a considerable amount of blood in order to cure or prevent illness and disease. The physician would choose a blade and set it on the patient's vein and then use this wooden flame stick to hit the back of the flame. While metal instruments could be used, an alternative method for bloodletting was the practice of using leeches. Leeches! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my yep, those worms with a sucker at either end. Leeching worked in a similar vein, pun intended, than the use of metal instruments, but it was less invasive, with the placement of leeches on the affected area. This procedure usually ended when the leeches were full of the infected blood and fell off. Oh, he misses me. You want to kiss him goodbye? Bye. 
been real. Ah! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. <sighs> Chef Ramsay is greeted by something unexpected. Bloody hell. This weighs over seven ounces or about 200 grams for the rest of the world. And um, at least 50% of its surface is still above the surface of the mercury. Number one, trepanation. This practice has been around for so long that it's believed to be one of the oldest surgical procedures. In fact, many skulls dated to 6500 BC have been found with holes from trepanation. It's believed that these holes were drilled as a means of drawing out evil spirits, as well as curing epileptic seizures, migraines, and mental disorders. Like the lobotomy, trepanation involves making a hole in the skull, but unlike the lobotomy, it stops short of actually touching the brain. The practice is still around today. Proponents claim that it increases blood flow to the brain and expands consciousness, but there is no scientific data to support these claims. Do you agree with our list? Which medical practice has piqued your curiosity? You sure you want to go ahead? No, not my head. Just cut off the stinky arm. For more historically baffling top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Well, I think we can judge this treatment a great success. What do you say, Mrs. Parsons? Startling, Dr. Dalrymple. Powerful demonstration.